Okay. Your name. It's true. Uh, which you would check again as to what difference. You just turned out 73 minus 37 is, I believe, 36, which again is evenly divisible by what? It's false. So, true. Um, again, we're checking is that difference evenly divisible by 12? All right, so let's write a definition. So we're going to go with integers now, which means negative three, negative three, negative one, zero, one, two, three. Dot, dot, dots on each side. So all the natural numbers and zero and all the negative numbers. So integers. Four integers A and B. And I number ten and ten greater than one. So that's the numbers two and bigger. If A minus B is divisible by ten, B. We the only one we looked at is mod 12, but again, we could work in any particular modulus. So let's throw a couple layers up here. True is false. Mr. Cunningham, we can't, okay. We can't see the board when you go that far. Okay, right here? Yeah, can't see it. <laughs> All right, sorry, you're good. Uh, throw my All right. Here, folks. Again, all you're doing is 16 minus 10 is what, six? That's even divisible by two. So it's an easy check. What, 10, like normal numbers? Is that how that works? Mm -hmm. No, maybe just be mod 10. Oh, wait, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Man, there is a tendency, I will, you, you know, you'll pick up why here in a little bit, to mix this up with working in uh, numeration systems and other bases of the digital place value system. Uh, but they are two different things. Okay. Um, Yeah, that's pretty easy to check even when we're on the middle because I can go 49 minus 32. That's going to give me what 17. Certainly not divisible by what five. So those would not be in that particular model. That is false. All right. Now 
there is another way uh, that we can uh, check the CHP numbers are uh, either to take your models um, besides taking the difference of the two. Um, if I, so we'll just say this is another criteria. You take 12 and divide it into 14, you get a remainder of what? Two. It goes one time remainder of two. You take 12 and divide it into two, it goes zero times remainder of what? Two. And then the same deal here. Now, this one's a little, we'll say this one a second. 12 goes into 15, remainder of what? Three. 12 goes into three, zero times remainder of what? Three. That is, if I take the mod and I divide it individually into each of those two numbers, I get the same remainder. And hence, when we were going to look at some other uh, arithmetic and different models, and sometimes referred to these arithmetic or remainder. Now, this one was true. 12 goes into 73. Uh, how many times? Six times. Uh, one. I'm sorry? Just one last time. Well, well, let's see here. Um, yeah. 12 goes into six times. That's what 72. The remainder of one. 12 goes into 37 three times, but the remainder is what? One. And there's the criteria. That is, if the modulus divides each individual into each of those two numbers and you obtain the same what? Remainder, then it's the same, then that works as well. And sometimes that's more convenient to use. Um, this case. Certainly two when they're there, even with two when they're there, even though. That is the remainder of each case is zero. Here, five goes into 49, what, nine times? Remainder of four. So five divided into there six times, remainder of what? Two. The remainders were not the same. So, yeah, that's the criteria. If A divided by N, B divided by N. Both in the same remainders. Uh, let's keep not this sheet. Modulus four. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so review time. Keep in mind, this seem like a long time ago. Uh, we work with sets. Do you remember what a partition is? If I take a set and I, and I form a partition, bring in this. 
right. So you remember union? You remember intersection, right? So if I take any set and I break it up into subsets such that if I union all the subsets together, I get that set back, set I started with. And if I intersect them, I get nothing. That is the however you form it. And there doesn't, there's not a certain number of um, subsets you have to create. It could just be two subsets, but or it could be three subsets. But as long as they are disjoint, they have nothing in common. And if you union, you get back the whole set. That's what we say forms a partition of that set. What I want to look at is I'm going to write down a set. Now, remember for God, the old modules that A and B are integers. So, what I want to write down are all the integers here that are congruent. Zero. Now, basically, that would then mean if it's all the integers that are congruent to zero of mod four, then these are all going to be numbers that are what multiples of four. You may have to be, you could just whatever energy you have, you just subtract from zero. And so to get that difference, uh, to have a remainder of zero, you just have to be multiple of four. So I'm going to kind of start here. Four. Four would certainly be congruent to zero and not four. Four minus zero is four, and then you go four. Then it's fairly easy just to go up the line. All I really need to do is start adding more. Four. Four, eight. Seven, eight. Four, nine. Back this way, subtract so zero, uh, negative four, negative four. <laughs> and now I want all the numbers from zero to one. Now, <clears throat> got to pick one to start with. So I'm going to pick five. So if you think about it, five minus one would be four. So that's four. Then nine would be the next one. That is, from there, just start adding what? Four. And all these would have to be congruent from one. So the next one is 13. I'm going back the other way, this should be one. And that's four, negative three. And you start to kind of see a pattern emerge here. Now I'm going to go with everything that is in the two. Two. All right. Kind of going in the same vein. Six minus two is what? Four. So my starting place. Start adding four. So it's 10. And then what? That's enough. Two. And then negative two. And then negative six. Uh, 
call the entrance from room to three in mod four. And then same thing, seven minus three is four. So we start at seven. Start adding four. So uh, 15. 19. And backing up, this will be three. Negative one. Uh, negative five. And what I have now captured at that point that I've done this last time, if I was put all these what, four sets together, that's going to be the entire set of integers. That is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, onward and forward. So uh, there's not going to be a fifth one here. I'm going to just be duplicating at that point. Of course, I go back, go backwards as well. Maybe one, maybe two, maybe three. Or that one, two, if I looked at finding, take any modulus, so I picked the small one so we could kind of see it. But if I would do this for modulus five, then I would have five what subsets? Everything congruent to what? Either zero, one, two, three, or what? Four. Now you start to see why sometimes you just kind of mix this up with working in other bases, but we make to have a lot of similarity. Um, but it forms what we call again a partition. That is, I took the set of integers and I broke them into what four sets, which these four sets are disjoint. They have nothing in common, but if you union them all up, you get the entire set of what integers. So at the end of the day, um, if you take say like zero from mod four, there's infinitely many integers that are what congruent to what to, to zero. Um, but if I take any energy, I'm in mod four and say, okay, find out which what integer is congruent to it. Generally, we pick, we find either what, zero, one, two, or what, three. So if we do some arithmetic in a different modulus and we give an answer, there's actually infinitely many answers, but we're looking for zero through modulus minus one. So if I were trying to do some arithmetic in um, mod 12, I'm looking for an answer of zero to a level. So what's the easiest way to find say an answer like that? Um, let's say we did this eight times nine. Mod 10. All I would have to do here, I'm just thinking about counting on a clock here, just go eight times nine is what, 72? And then what I would use is the second criteria here. And I would just say 10 divides into 72 with the remainder of what, two. So my answer is what, two. Make sense? That's it. Okay, anybody have a book? A uh, textbook, actually, yeah. I'm looking for an ISBN. We don't carry textbooks anymore, do we? All right, but you know what an ISBN is, right? 
that we would definitely have to know. That has to be an international standard book number. Now, they used to be 10 digits. Now they're 13. And most books you will find both. Um, so I happen to have. It's ISBN. Zero. Six, seven, three. Nine. Eight, nine, three. All right, and the numbers, this is the 10 digit. Uh, this is the language. Publisher. Author. And this last one, the singular digit, one off by itself, is called a check digit. Sole purpose in life is to make sure somebody doesn't transpose numbers or or make up a different number, so on and so forth. But this this number locks in all of these numbers have to be exactly that. This check digit. And so what I want to look at is the mathematics behind what makes this digit so special that it locks all these numbers up. So I'm going to set up a Kind of an equation here. I'm going to go, you'll see the pattern here in a second. Zero. Uh, one, two, eight times seven, plus seven times three, plus nine. Excuse me, uh, six times nine plus five times nine plus four times eight plus uh, three times nine plus a two times three. So basically, I'm going what 10 times the first digit plus nine times this digit plus eight times this digit, all the way down the line. Now, the last digit I have left is this 10, which would be times what? One. So I even found one itself. So what I'm going to write is plus the sum number x. Now, what I need to have happen is all of this, I want to be congruent to zero. That's parentheses there. Mod 11. So we got some arithmetic to do here. Uh, that's going to be zero. That's going to be zero. So we are adding them up now. So you multiplied all those numbers by nine? Uh, not by nine. 
Um, so what happened was the first number on the left of the, of the ISBN, I multiplied by 10. Then I go plus nine times the next digit. Okay. Plus eight times the next digit plus seven times the next digit. So then sequentially down, and then it goes all the way down to here, it'd be three times two or two times three. And then the last one's a check digit, but it would be multiplied by one. So 10, nine, eight, etc. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And I'm waiting on, what'd you get? I got 327, but I don't know if I added. Okay, 327. We'll know here in a second. I don't know if we're on or not. So we'll say it was 327. Now it's still plus what? Number X. And congruent zero mod left. So that is, I need to find a number. And it would be zero through 10. Some one number, zero through 10. Added to what 327, but that sum is evenly divisible by 11. So if your arithmetic was right, check 329 divided by 11. Does it go even? Does not? If it doesn't go even, well, yeah, we'll have an issue. So let me check. I got 295. Yeah. You got 295? Okay. You may have added one twice. Actually. I haven't checked it yet. Now, let's go with 295. Now, 295, uh, well, 297. Is 297 even divisible by 11? Yeah. And we add to it. So, all right, so these sums up to be 295. But what I'm then looking for is give me one number. Had to be two. In this case, there would only be one number, zero through 10, that would make this sum evenly divisible by 11. And it turns out it's what? It's the only one that works. So there's no way um, that you can, and even if you transpose these two, who cares? It's not going to really affect anything, but it would be a big effect if what you change these two. They would no longer, this would not match up with this check. Would it make sense? Okay, so a little practical application. So um, now, this may take a second. Maybe, maybe quicker than this. Okay. And we but we don't have a we don't have any text here. Okay. Uh,
Okay. All right. So let's see where I can't get on nine seven eight. Zero one three four nine nine five five eight nine. and now what thirteen? So, um. Now, they didn't put any uh, marks in here, so I'm assuming these were marks or dashes. That last one is the check digit. All right. So, how does the coding work here? 13 digits. All right, here we go. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing. Let me make sure. Uh, I want to leave myself enough room. I have more digits than I have. Ten digits. Right, don't write this down. Don't write this down yet in case I mess this up. I think it's going to start at one. Three times three plus one. Three times one plus Eight. And the last one will be one. So I got to figure it right. So this time I didn't start at 10 and then times nine, then times eight. I alternated what one from what three. So I went one times nine plus three times seven plus one times eight plus three times zero plus one times one. But it's alternating starting at one and then alternating ones and threes. Do every digit up to here, right? 
Then the last digit will be multiplied by, and that's where you made that word, it gets multiplied by what? One. And so this is sort of the same deal as the last one we did, except you want not to be congruent to model 11, but mod. Which means you're looking for now a digit zero through what nine, and I don't know if you mean on the uh, the, the uh, ten digit ISBN. Have you ever seen a digit with a capital X? I have. I never really paid attention, and I don't know if you guys even use a ten digit anymore. But I have. Well, that what is the the X for? If you come up with that remainder of 10, because remember, you could be zero through 10. So X just meant 10, that's all. Remember, numerals, that's 10. So, but now I've got to do the same deal. I'm going to have to add these up. Uh, this will be 9 plus 27 plus 8 plus 0 plus 9 plus 4 plus 27 plus 9 plus 15 plus 5 plus 24. What do those add up to be? Uh, 357 is 21. Thank you. That would certainly make a problem. Okay, let me check the others. I think we're good. I will add them up as well. I'm getting 132. Got the same thing? 132. That's our number X. Zero through now. Typically, it's a little easier to figure with mod 10 anyway, mentally, as opposed to trying to divide by 11. Um, oh, that's not good. That's not good. Right now, I'm coming up with an answer of eight. Could have been nine. Hmm. Well, those are okay. I got 141, but I don't know if I've got the right numbers written down. Uh, well, 141 would work. See what I'm technically doing is, is on this last one. Because what I'm trying to do is generate. Okay. okay. But who somebody got 141. Now was that adding up? 
up to here, up to 24. Because I, I did it twice and I got 132 both times. I I added a nine to the okay. 24. You added in that nine. Okay. Um, Um, all right, give me one second. So uh, that would be Uh, okay, I got to back it. Let me check one last thing. That is, did I copy down the ISBN correctly? Nine seven eight zero one three four nine nine five five. Okay, I found the problem. Sorry, guys. That's supposed to be an eight. Okay. Now it works. All right, I copied. All right, so what happened, guys, when I copied down the ISBN, I wrote a check digit of nine. It was supposed to be eight. Um, every, everything was working out except. Uh, what I came up with should have said check with your date. So I should have went back and checked that first. All right, so I don't want to add in that last digit when you're checking is the check digit right. So you've got your 13 digits. So just like on the 10 digit situation, you're going to use the first, in this case, what, 12 digits. And then alternating between one and three all the way down the line. I don't understand why you do one and three instead of go with 10 by this way. Why? It was just uh, now for I can't explain why they chose to do it that way for the 10 digit, but the one three I can make a little bit more sense here in a second when I talk about some other check digits besides ISBN. Um, the the um, and I, I if I had to guess it's a programming thing. Uh, but anyway, so I'm alternating starting with one, then times three, times one, times three, times one, all the way down to that 12 digit. And then I add in, I'd say plus X, so it's going to be one times X. And I want that to be congruent to zero in my 10. And so then when I added all these up several times, I kept getting like 132, then again, there would be one digit, zero through nine, that would make what if the sum congruent to zero mod what 10? And in fact, it has to be eight. <clears throat> I double check now, what you can't see is the ISBN, but I definitely that's an eight, not a nine. The, the, the 10 digit, it was a nine. That's where I, I think I grabbed the nine thing. This is actually your textbook, the full proof edition mathematical ideas. <clears throat> okay. So why did they switch to the one and three? If I had to guess, everyone familiar with UPC codes? If you've ever checked out of Walmart, 
every single thing you purchase has a what UPC code. Sometimes we call it what barcode, right? And you scan, right? Comes up. UPC stands for universal product code. And every universal product code has a check digit, just like ISBN. Now they will vary. Like you'll pick up a, a, a you know bottle of the same water or something. And then pick up some other a notebook like that. It's got a again bar UPC code on some somewhere. Some of those UPC codes are seven digits. Some of them are nine digits. Some of them are twelve digits. Um, and you read them left to right, just like you do the ISBN. But the UPC check digit two point three one three one three one three one three, and then mod ten. So I think they why they use the other one for. Uh, the 10 digit ISBN, I do not know. But uh, you will still find on books, on books, uh, textbooks, 10 digits and 13 digits. Eventually, I would think the 10 digits is going to go away. Okay. Um, so. Oh, okay. Um Aside from the birthday problem, which is next time, uh, I don't think that's all I have now. I don't have this on my map right again. So, and I don't have anyone to give you yet. Uh, what I need to do is, um, what I'm going to do is get a uh, homework scan um, and then have you work it out. Again, just kind of like old fashioned homework, but I will email that scan to the class. And then it uh, won't be a whole lot of problems for you. Keep going over this. And um, as before, I'm going to collect this assignment. Okay. And so on Wednesday, uh, we'll do the birthday problem um, and review um, uh, over what we have done in chapters four and five. So that's the plan for Wednesday. Okay. So expect a scan from me within. Okay. All right. Um, also, a uh, question came up 